A man from Get Speed back just about to jump on a 1909 accelerator call to go through a presentation that we've put together for our target customer. So let's see what people put together. Over and over and over again. And I've been doing like customer training to this degree since I was. Uh, I'm Matt from Get Speed back, um, which, as everyone here knows, we're going to be changing the, the name at some point soon. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are, our product is a software platform that enables businesses to conduct simple, continuous employee performance reviews throughout the year. And we've generated this customer profile um, and, and named our ideal customer, Laura, um, who is a partner at a South Florida-based digital marketing agency, specifically um, at a digital marketing agency because we've identified that type of business and that industry as being early adopters in terms of technology and different tech products. Um, Laura herself oversees operations as an operations manager. Uh, the reason why we selected this is because it's the perfect intersection between uh, three different customer types, one being the end user. So, the size of her agency dictates that she actually participates in employee performance reviews from time to time, and she understands how frustrating that can be. Uh, she's also the decision maker in terms of what the uh, company uses to conduct the reviews and or other software, and she is also the buyer. She uses her credit card to make uh, purchasing decisions. So. By identifying this one individual, we'll actually uh, have a much easier time of selling our product into these types of companies because she is the one making all the relevant decisions and feeling the pain as well. Um, we said 40 employees and growing. Uh, this is important for us because um, our platform very much deals with scalability and we want to make sure we're focusing on companies that have money and are willing to spend it on employees and employee development. Uh, the company itself has a liberal PTO policy and good benefits, just indicating that they like to concentrate on employees. They're also uh, very forward in terms of their technology using these other pieces of software. Uh, Laura herself, um, I described as a tech geek who likes to spend some of her free time um, improving her personal skills by, by reading up on things like management and business books. So, what's Laura's problem? Uh, pertaining to employee performance reviews specifically, uh, one being there's not enough time. So, there's not enough time in terms of her time. She would like to have a hand in giving feedback to all of her employees, but she just doesn't have the bandwidth to be able to do it. Um, additionally, she knows that her employees, specifically managers and um, lower level employees who are also end users don't have a lot of time in their schedule to go through the employee performance review process. They, they effectively have to take a week or two every six months um, away from the work that they normally do to go through this process together. Um, additionally, another problem is that reviews for them are a hassle. The, the method that they're using is pen and paper, like many of the companies we actually interviewed, which is extremely surprising to me. Uh, you know, going through and using a, a paper and pen uh, template is not convenient, again, in terms of time, but also storage and being able to, to reference the information in the future when we're looking at how employees progress from one review to another. And additionally, it's not a scalable option. Uh, when you add new employees, it just takes more and more time to do it in this, in this manner. And also, there are other functions you're not really able to, to follow up on, such as uh, goal setting or OKR setting and aligning the company's goals to the individual's goals. Um, being able to monitor those things on a more frequent basis, it's just you just can't do it um, in this manual sort of setup that they have. So, in terms of um, alternatives, one being <laughs> the manual paper and pen uh, model, we found that many people uh, employ this because they feel it gives them a sense of um, customizability to their reviews. They feel that they can put something together and change it um, however they want. But again, it's, it's difficult to file away. Um, typically, no one ever looks at them again, uh, and it's just not a useful tool. 
Um, other alternatives uh, that we found along the way in these interviews include bundled HR services or PEOs, as, as many people refer to them, where uh, there are HR tools that manage other aspects of the employee life cycle, such as hiring, onboarding, payroll, benefits management, PTO, and they also offer an employee performance monitoring function, but it's very much secondary and not very well put together and not the focus. Um, and lastly, dedicated evaluation software. So there's other competitors in the market whose sole purpose is to provide a really good experience for monitoring employees um, throughout the year, uh, seeing how they're doing, and then ultimately generating performance evaluation. And this is our sort of most direct competition in terms of the online space. But funnily enough, it's not our direct competition in terms of, of the frequency that, that this has come up in our interviews. Actually, most of what we've come across is paper and pen or a derivation where people are using Google Docs and things, things to that effect. So um, ultimately, we feel like this is a really good uh, target customer for us. Um, focusing on South Florida specifically enables us to, have, uh, to get the most impact for the reach outs that we're doing. Um, and again, focusing on digital agencies first allows us to sort of hit the early adopter phase and hone our sales and product before we decide to scale to other businesses and other industries. Yeah, that's an awesome question. It actually it came up in our breakout discussion um, with Jen and Greg, <laughs> and, and we were talking about interviewing people who are um, against the prospect of change or haven't gone out themselves to try to make the process easier. So it's a very it's a very fine line of like, do you have a manual process in place and are you thinking about scaling or finding an easier solution or have you tried to? That is a is a perfect customer for us because we know that they're they're a growing company and they're going to need to change. But at the same time, um, if they're too early in the game, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and maybe we should also focus on people who have this software in place already, and we just make the case of why we're so much better or cheaper or provide better value. So uh, I'd say it's a very gray area, both, but um, I think to start off with, uh, we're going to do the, the, the companies who have a manual approach, but are obviously indicating that they're very forward thinking because of the other software that they use. Yeah, sir. And also, I mean, just to just to lower the barrier to entry is huge as well because if they're if they're not bothered to try to add something else because they think it's like oh another piece of software I have to use if we're able to convey yeah it is but um, ours is special because it's really out of the way you don't have to use the software whatsoever then it may make it easier to convert them but you're I mean yeah you're absolutely right <laughs> it's it we'll have to hone it as we continue to talk to people. What is that? Oh, I can't see very well because of the. I can't see very well. 